actually I should say guests uh, are joining us, Rabbi Michael Cohn from the Arava Institute. Rabbi, welcome. Thank you for having me. And uh, Sarah Hefez, who is the director of Jewish National Fund in New England. Uh, Sarah, nice to have you in the studio as well. Thanks so much. So, uh, Rabbi, you're uh, an interesting guy. In a couple of minutes before we got on the air, you told me a little bit about your background. You're a, uh, a rabbi that serves a community in southern Vermont uh, in Manchester Center. Is that yeah, I'm the rabbi emeritus there now. I was the first full-time rabbi, and I've been uh, the emeritus there for 13 years now, working full-time for Arva, dividing my time between Vermont and, and Israel. So, um, Arava Institute, a fascinating place. You want to tell us a little bit about the Arava Institute, let our listeners know a little bit about it, and uh, what it brings to, uh, to the Middle East, just a fascinating program. Sure, so um, I kind of had the idyllic uh, rabbinic life. I could snowshoe and cross-country ski to my synagogue, and in my seventh year, my synagogue gave me a, an 11th month sabbatical, and it ended up being on the, uh, the founding faculty of the Institute and discovered a place with so many of my passions. The Institute is about uh, peace, it's about the environment, it's about cross-cultural learning, it's about the desert, it's about the best of Zionism, it's about kibbutz. So I kind of found a place for me. Um, and so I was on the, the faculty that first year, and the raison d'etre of the Institute is to form a, a cadre of environmental leaders for the region. And the way that we do that is our student body is one-third Israeli Jewish, one-third Arab, meaning Israeli, Arab, Palestinian, and Jordanian, and one-third of the rest of the world, mostly North America, so students from the United States can come and use as a study abroad option either for a full year or a semester on the undergraduate level, and we also have a two-year master's program. But the goal is to train a, uh, environmental leaders for the region. So how long has the program been in existence? Since the fall of 1996. And um, how many, approximately how many students have gone through the program? We have about 700 alumni, of which 400 are in the Middle East and 300 around the world, mostly North America. And we actually have, one of the things that we're able to, to document with our program is we see both long-term personal and professional relationships that come out of the program, which is not always happens when you bring together this constellation of students. And we just had our, our annual conference uh, uh, two weeks ago in the Middle East, and 90 of our alumni showed up, which is like 25% of our alumni. Now, how many universities can say 25%? And that's kind of a constant for us. 25% of our alumni in the Middle East will show up um, for these conferences. So not only is it obviously a life-changing event for them, but it's a, a, a connection to an organization. Obviously, feel a very strong connection to it. Um, so uh, the, the uh, concept or the precept for the organization is fascinating. Um, uh, I would also think that one of the um, hopes is that you're uh, spawning some degree of dialogue leading to peaceful coexistence among people that um, perhaps come grow up with different views and recognize how similar they are. Um, is, that, is that really one of the things that, that you're trying to embark upon? It's, it's one of the spin-offs. That, like I said, our real goal is training these environmental leaders, and we also have a very active research department that, that I'll talk about uh, in a little bit later on. We realized after the, uh, the second intifada that we needed to deal directly with the conflict, so we created something called Peace Building and Environmental Leadership Seminar where we basically shove the conflict down the students' throats. And we use the notion of the double narrative that was developed by Dr. Sami Adwan of Bethlehem University and Dr. Balon of Ben-Gurion, that there's two narratives. There's an Israeli narrative and a Palestinian narrative, and most people even know are more comfortable in the other. To learn and really appreciate the other takes a lot of work. Uh, those sessions are really difficult. Students leave screaming and angry at each other. We also deal with compassionate listening as part of those, um, those uh, sessions. But you have to deal with, with the conflict, of where we call it the, the camel in the tent. Um, and despite the difficulty, um, because of ironically the environment or the land which the conflict is over, but if you look at that same piece of real estate, not from a geopolitical sense where you see lines, borders, walls, and divisions, but from a perspective of the environment, all of those divisions are wiped away. And you're actually invited, you're forced to work with the other because the environment doesn't know from these borders. And so the environment becomes the level playing field, the glue, the metaphor that holds it together. And as the peace process goes up and down, as negotiations go up and down, the environment is a constant. And if you can latch onto that, you can go through difficult times. And that's why our focus is the environment and creating these environmental leaders. The spin-off is kind of a peace dividend, if you will. 